Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to DNews Plus again today. I am Trace, and this is episode two of five in our series on mosquitoes. Yesterday we talked about our history with mosquitoes and how they've changed human history, because they have. If you haven't tuned into that, go back and take a look. Today we're going to talk about why mosquitoes like us so much. We're also going to get into the deadly diseases that mosquitoes carry. Kind of a downer, but don't worry, we'll get past it. Because then we're going to talk about how we're going to fight mosquitoes, maybe to the death. Like, maybe kill all of them. Maybe. Anyway, stick around. Make sure you subscribe so you get all the episodes. If you want to listen to an audio podcast, link in the description. You know the drill. If you don't know the drill, welcome to DNews Plus. This is awesome. So we have a long and enduring relationship with mosquitoes. Obviously, you get that. But some of us seem to have a closer relationship than others. I get bit by mosquitoes all the time. Producer Brian, he doesn't get bit by mosquitoes like ever. How come that is? To answer that, we have to know what attracts mosquitoes to us. I mean, Humans seem like we're just kind of hanging, right? We're just doing our thing. But every moment, we're giving off hundreds and some of us thousands of different natural scents. And some insects, they just love them. According to a chemist, his name is Ulrich R. Bernier, uh, and he works with the Agriculture Research Society Center for Medical Agricultural and Veterinary Entomology Mosquito and Fly Research. It's a unit. Uh, Quote, we have found more than 340 different chemical scents produced by human skin, and some of these attract mosquitoes. So that's one thing. Put that aside for a minute. We smell funny. Mosquitoes like it. They come at. But it could also be genetics. A PLOS One study used identical and non-identical twins and then figured out which was more attractive to mosquitoes. They exposed both the twins and non-identical twins and then gave them scores based on the bites that they were given. Identical twins, who share this vast majority of their genetics, had very consistent bite scores, you know, however they looked at it, size or frequency or whatever. Non-identical twins had different genes and their scores were also more different, indicating to those researchers that the genetics play some part. Perhaps they play some part in those smells and thus, you know, they bite us more often, but whatever it is, scientists don't quite know why. There are some other reasons, like potentially type O blood is more attractive to mosquitoes, people with high cholesterol or with steroids in their system who have excess amounts of uric acid, the lactic acid from your sweat, people who are drinking beer or have bacteria, certain types living on our skin, or maybe they were eating Limburger cheese. These are all real, but they're also all kind of mysteries. And it's good for people, you know, who volunteered to get bit by mosquitoes. Thank you so much to you guys, you guys are the best for trying to figure this out uh, in the name of science. But one thing that we do know they're attracted to though, carbon dioxide, stuff we're breathing out all the time, respiration. Female mosquitoes have a receptor neuron called CPA and it detects CO2 in very minute quantities. Assuming of course that you know carbon dioxide equals mammals, mammals equal blood and blood thus equals tasty, tasty mosquito food. The home remedies for this all kind of make sense if you think of it as you're breathing out this carbon dioxide, right? Smoke contains carbon dioxide, but also a bunch of other stuff, and it masks the stuff that you're breathing out. Smelly bug sprays and citronellas, which is actually, by the way, just fun fact, an Asian grass, which contains oil. The oil is really pungent, and that hides the CO2 scent. So essentially, they're covering up everything. But mosquitoes are still really good at sensing CO2. They've evolved because this is what they need in order to eat. And without eating, they can't mate. Without mating, they can't make more mosquitoes. So they've evolved with the singular purpose. They can sense CO2 at between 10 and 50 meters. 50 meters. I'm gonna do a sports metaphor here. I'm doing it. And if a mosquito is 50 meters from you, it means like you're on the 50 yard line and the mosquito is buzzing around in the end zone. I think that's correct, sports, not my thing. But either way, it's buzzing around over there and it's like, there's a human here somewhere. So it goes and follows that CO2 trail like a cartoon character and it gets closer and closer and within five and 15 meters or so, it can see you. They have compound eyes, hundreds of tiny little lenses all across the front of their head. In fact, the mosquito's head is mostly eye. They also have thermal sensors so they can pick up your body heat once they get close enough and they're like, mmm, tasty warm blood. And when they've zoned in on you and you don't manage to swat them away, they're gonna land and bite. This is only the females, by the way, so it's gonna be a lady mosquito getting all up on you. And after landing, it sticks its proboscis into you. Sounds dirty, right? 
A study from 2010 looked closely at what happens next. The study called her proboscis, a natural biomicroelectromechanical system, which is pretty awesome. And what she does is she painlessly gets through your skin with uh, nano sharp teeth and they act as saws. And once that's over, she can stick her fascia inside to get that sweet, sweet blood. There's actually a great play-by-play -play of this on the North Carolina State's Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. We'll put a link down below. Because you have an immune system, once that proboscis gets all up inside of your body, mosquitoes have to fight off your immune system. The saliva that the mosquito is putting into your body as it's sucking the blood out of your body keeps your blood from clotting. It contains proteins that stop it. And then she just gorges until her abdomen is full, which is great for her, bad for us, because the saliva that she's putting into your bloodstream during this feeding frenzy is what causes the skin irritation that makes the mosquito bite that we see. Proteins from the mosquito saliva set off an immune response. The immune response says, oh my God, there's an invader somewhere. And like all good things, the mosquito isn't really the thing causing the mosquito bite reaction. That's us. That's our own immune system causing it. Immune system responses then cause a bump or a bite. It's technically called a wheel. And the body creates a chemical, which you are familiar with, called histamine. When you take an antihistamine, you're getting rid of, you're knocking back that histamine reaction. The chemical creates that bump and that wheel, and the swelling of the little bump disturbs the nerves in that region. They get annoyed, and annoyed nerves equals itching. Once the immune cells break down the saliva, the wheel's gonna disappear, but in between, it's really awful, and there's so much itchiness. I feel violated by her proboscis. That lady mosquito forcibly spit in my blood. Weird. So scratching the itch is only gonna make this worse because you're doing this to yourself. Your body is trying to break down this saliva and scratching inflames the wheel and irritates it even more and more swelling means more annoyed nerves. More annoyed nerves means more itching. The body's like, oh my God, it's gotten worse. We need more histamine here, stat, which causes more swelling and irritation and more scratching. I hate mosquitoes so much, you guys, I hate them. I hate them. So now that we get how they work, what are these things all about? Males, uh, they only live a few days. They're the kind of the boring part of the mosquito chain. Their main purpose is to mate. That's all they're for. Females, they live longer. They're the ones who bite us. And the females take iron and protein found in the blood that they just sucked out of me. And they use it to produce eggs. Males and females both will drink nectar and they'll also drink water. The good news is not all mosquitoes eat the blood of humans. Some feed on mammals or birds or amphibians or reptiles. They fall into three main categories. The Aedes mosquitoes, which lay eggs in floodwater areas. The Anopheles mosquitoes, which lay eggs in permanent freshwater. And the Culex mosquitoes, which lay eggs in standing water. Those are my least favorite. Mosquitoes though, I don't know if you caught this from them, they need water. The CDC approximates there are 3,500 different species of mosquito and they're grouped into 41 genres. The Anopheles mosquitoes are the only ones that carry malaria, and of the 430 different kinds of Anopheles, only 30 to 40 can actually carry the malaria virus. They're also the guys that carry elephantiasis and encephalitis. The Culex, they're responsible for West Nile, and Aedes carry yellow fever and dengue. And how do they do this, and why do they do this? We're gonna get into stuff like that tomorrow on this show. So make sure you subscribe so you get all of the episodes of DNews Plus this week about mosquitoes. And we'll see you next time. Let us know down in the comments the worst mosquito bite you ever had. I had this one once that was on my arm. It was so big and my mom rubbed calamine lotion on it. And I, I just looked like I was like face painting, but on my arm, it was weird. It was a lot. It was a huge mosquito bite. Tell us about it down in the comments and keep coming back here every day.